Welcome to the Prosperous Empath Podcast, designed especially for empaths and highly sensitive entrepreneurs just like you who are committed to achieving holistic success. I'm your host, Catherine Wood, master certified coach, author, mastermind leader, and founder of Unbounded Potential, a boutique coaching firm for empathic entrepreneurs. I'm on a mission to bring empathy back into the world of business. Each episode will focus on achieving more by doing less through leveraging empath-friendly leadership practices, boundaries, rituals, and systems, all the while continuing to care deeply about ourselves, others, and the world around us. If you are committed to joyful living and running a conscious business, but amassing wealth while doing so, proving that you can have both in a society that tells you you can't, then you are in the right place. Join me here each week to find out how. Be sure to subscribe and leave a review so you won't miss an episode. Plus, you'll find all the show notes and helpful resources over at unbounded-potential.com. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Prosperous Empath. Kat here. I thought I would do something a little different today on the podcast. I thought it might be interesting to do a bit of a behind the scenes of what's been going on in my world and in Unbounded Potential because there is so much change and transition and birthing literally and figuratively afoot that I thought it could just be interesting for me to share some of the breakthroughs that I've been generating, as well as some of the learnings, because something that I really appreciate having been in the world of personal development and coaching for the past decade is that sometimes the coaches and leaders that we look up to and learn from, they don't always share the messy part. Like they don't always share the messy middle. They share the distinguished Uh, end journey and what they took away and what they learned and what they got from the experience. And they don't always reveal their humanity. And I think there's so much value in uh, in sharing more of our humanity with the world. I think it makes uh, people trust us and feel a little less different and more similar. Uh, It feels like for me personally, it's always been just such a connecting experience when others that I look up to and admire uh, are willing to share the things that haven't been going so well. And there, you know, there's been a lot that's been really amazing and beautiful in my life recently. And there's also been some really crappy parts too. So I wanted to let you in a little on some of those breakthroughs, as well as some of the aspects that I'm still in process around and gaining the lessons and the learnings. And I hope that you find it of value. So let's see. So I am pre-recording this episode um, by, gosh, a little over a month, six weeks, four to six weeks, because we are currently batching episodes well ahead of time uh, to be released when I'm on maternity leave later this fall. So I'm recording this episode uh, while currently 27 weeks pregnant as of today. And when this episode releases, I will be well into my third trimester of pregnancy at 32 weeks. And one of the things that currently is Um, really impacting me and has been really challenging is that I have COVID and, um, and I'm well into my fourth week of experiencing symptoms. Um, I started experiencing symptoms of a sinus infection literally almost a month ago on May 15th. And something that I did not realize being pregnant is that you are inherently more immunocompromised being pregnant because you're fighting for two, you're fighting for yourself and for your baby. So not only are you more susceptible to illness, but it can also take a much longer time to recovery and to recover. And this is something that I did not know. (laughs) And one of the, um, 
one of the, I guess, like silly learnings from this experience is that I think I was having a little bit of a, like a superhero complex around being sick because I don't get sick (laughs) and I haven't been sick for several years now until this illness, like truly it's, it's likely been maybe three years since I've at minimum three, four years since I've been sick. And I haven't had a serious uh, experience of COVID at all since the launch of the pandemic. Um, my When my husband got sick uh, a year ago, a year and a half ago from COVID, he was hit really hard and was on bed rest for a week. And I had a cough for one day. So I think that I was uh, just experiencing this artificial immunity, like I was untouchable or like nothing could happen to me. And so when I started getting sick, I don't think I took my symptoms seriously because uh, my my mind was telling me a different story than my body was. And I chose to trust my mind, which is a little bit of maybe just some ego in there. Um, because my body was telling me pretty clearly that I was sick and that I should be, um, you know, looking into care and, and support sooner. And, and I really didn't. And, um, I don't think that I really reconciled that I was actually sick and needing to reach out to the doctor until, uh, like two and a half weeks after I first experienced symptoms. So that's like a little bit of how uh, my own survival mechanism can kind of co-opt me is that um, I I kind of relate to myself as how it's gone in the past or former versions of me versus always versus necessarily trusting what's in front of me or trusting what my body is trying to tell me. And I think that that um, that was a really important lesson for me, for me from this experience. And there were also some, there's also been some really beautiful gifts from COVID as well. One of them is that it's really required me to let in a deeper level of support, uh, as well as lower my standards for what I'm creating, for what I'm taking on, for what I'm trying to plan ahead for in terms of my maternity leave. And this uh, really presented itself during our uh, uh, our most recent Unbounded retreat. We hosted our second mastermind retreat uh, at the end of May, and those are that weekend was really when I was experiencing some of my worst symptoms of COVID, um, and was the uh, really the impetus for me going into a clinic and and seeing a doctor. Um, But the consequence was that I couldn't show up to the degree and be of service to the degree that I'm practiced in or uh, love to do when I'm on retreat and facilitating transformation uh, and transformational conversations. Like I actually had to welcome in more co-creation, more partnership, uh, surrender some of my attachment to the degree and the time to which I was able to show up. And honestly, I think it um, it almost allowed for a deepened experience of of support and reciprocity and being willing to just give and receive in a more um, in a more empowered nature. And I think this is something that so many of the clients that I work with are really up for breakthroughs in how do we put down our walls, uh, not look like we always have our metaphorical shit together (laughs) and allow in more meaningful support and partnership and community. And so I definitely think that that was one of the, uh, not only takeaways for me from the retreat, but also for everyone else. So that's been a little bit of a hard, um, a hard pill to swallow, <laughs> pun intended, for the past month. Um, but at this point, I'm pretty much recovered. I still have this like lasting cough and tickle, which I'm hoping I don't get a coughing fit while recording this episode. Um, 
but it's been a really, I think a really important uh, learning for me as I lead up to becoming a mom is just really understanding on a deep level that um, I may not be able to show up and operate in the same ways that I've always been accustomed to, to do. And that's okay. And allowing my walls down, allowing people to see some of my humanity, welcoming and asking for more support are all absolutely in service of me and also the mother I want to be and what I want to model for my child and this idea that you don't have to be invincible, that we're so much stronger together than we are alone. So I mentioned at the beginning of the episode that I am uh, now just beginning my third trimester and I will be well into my third trimester when this episode launches. And it has been a bit of a surrender experiment for me. And if you have not read that book, I highly, highly recommend The Surrender Experiment by Michael Allen Singer. Uh, It is such a beautiful book um, from a very successful entrepreneur around giving up attachments to how things go and our own timelines around how we want things to look and how we want things to uh, come to be. And I think that's been a little of what uh, this pregnancy has taught me is that um, I don't always get to have a say in what things look like. And that doesn't necessarily prevent me from dreaming or envisioning or naming my desires. Um, And sometimes it's through leaning into naming them that we clarify what we want. And I think I'm still a little bit uh, in that, in that inquiry as I think about maternity leave and what I want it to look like. At this point, I know that I'll just be I'll be taking a maternity leave and I'll be co-creating with my husband and my clients and my team around what that actually looks like. Um, Another one of the really cool learnings from pregnancy and particularly stepping into the third trimester is it just really starts to clarify what's important, what's essential in business and what is non-essential. And that letting go of what's non-essential has really allowed me to um, just release some of the um, business activities and marketing efforts that I've just always done from a place of, oh, this is, you know, this is my commitment. This is how I uh, market my business. This is um, part of my job description as the CEO. And I think that pregnancy has really helped me reassess those activities and really re-clarify which ones are important and which ones are no longer important to me. And that's been so freeing and liberating. And some of the things that have, um, have been reinvented are, for one, the way I'm marketing the podcast. So I used to... Uh, promote two promotional pieces of content every week to uh, promote each podcast episode on social media. And it just felt like too much. (laughs) I mean, I understand that algorithmically, there's a very small percent of my followers who see my posts. And I just realized that I was no longer committed to um, producing extra content just for content's sake and increasing the likelihood that more people would see it, that I really just wanted to be posting one piece of social media content per week, per episode, sharing about the episode in my newsletter, as well as in my private community and sharing um, some of the marketing uh, material with my guests, if they're guest episodes, that they are welcome to share and promote their episode as well, if they feel so inclined with no expectation or attachment. And that has just felt so, so good, so freeing. Um, and similarly, 
I've also really given up some of my own personal expectations to show up on social media and engage in social media platforms. Most of what is being posted on social media at this point is completely done by my team and automated and scheduled in advance. And what I realized is that where I want to be showing up is in my private community because those are the relationships that I am really interested in investing in because I know that there is a inherent values alignment. And those are the entrepreneurs I want to be supporting and engaging with and surrounding myself with and connecting uh, them with one another. So that has just felt so much more aligned in my heart and in my nervous system. And it just feels so much uh, more like coming home to show up in my private community than it does to show up on social media. There's also that added second benefit of no longer suffering from those dopamine highs and lows of seeing how many people are engaging with my posts or liking or commenting. And there's no more targeted advertising that prey on my fears as a first time mom or a heart centered business owner. Like it feels just so much easier and there's so much more flow in how I'm showing up and engaging in relationship and uh, and if you're not already a member of our community, I definitely encourage you to come join us. It's completely free and we'll, of course, include the link in the show notes as we do uh, after every episode. And the last thing that has been a really freeing lesson from third trimester is just this um, realization that my commitment in business right now is to be of service, and add value. It's not to sell. It's not to launch new cohorts or new programs of the mastermind that really at this point, I'm in a, a season of sustaining business and adding value and uh, sharing my, my journey and my expertise and being of service and trusting that you know, when I'm in a different season of business, um, after we've had the baby later this fall, then I can revisit really um, selling our programs and launching new cohorts of the mastermind. And I think there's something that feels really, I mean, absolutely aligned about that, but also really freeing because oftentimes in online business, we so often feel this constant pressure to sell and I, I'm sure you've heard this, um, just this marketing BS that we always need to have products that people can buy and are readily available so that we can be constantly making sales. And <laughs> that is just not who I am. And that's not my business model. And it doesn't feel good to me. And it's so nice to just give myself full permission to embrace the season of life and business that I am in and to do it in a way that just feels so aligned and freeing and permission giving. So that's the second really um, like powerful area of life where I've been learning and growing quite literally <laughs> and figuratively. Now the third is super exciting and this is my first time sharing it on social media. My husband and I just purchased our second home and um, if you heard me share on a recent podcast, I was joking with um, Alex and Bob in our episode on redefining masculinity that my husband and I were temporarily homeless and we we technically were. <laughs> and that was such an empowered choice and such a breakthrough in surrender for me. And um, if you've been following along with me on the podcast for a while now, I'm sure I've spoken um, at some length about our home journey. And I'm really not at liberty to 
dig into the details of um, our first home experience, but it was a really, really hard experience for us and um, not what we imagined. It was a, a financial loss and there were a lot of really tough lessons that my husband and I had to learn when we bought and sold our first home in Maryland. Um, uh, gosh, a year and a half ago now we sold the home. And I think it's taken us both some, some time to, um, to heal and let go of some of the, uh, the hurt and the bitterness and the deceit from that experience. And we've been a, a long time now wanting to buy our second home and, just waiting for, um, waiting for when we found the right one, but also waiting for the timing because I think making big energetic and financial decisions like that, they have to feel right on so many levels. And I think sometimes we can rush into making those types of decisions from a place of necessity or urgency or external circumstances. And we were just really committed to doing it differently this time. So we have been, or we had been living in, um, in rentals for the past couple years and all of our possessions were in storage, which I don't think I realized the degree to which that felt ungrounding for me. I mean, we have so much furniture, which is now unpacked in our home by the time you were listening to this episode. But at the time of recording, like we we still have so much stuff in storage, furniture, boxes, um, even childhood memorabilia that I don't even know the degree to what we have. And I'm a minimalist. So that's really saying something because with every move, with every uh, rental, new rental, I've always given stuff away and donated and downsized. But there's still a lot of what I don't even know is in there. So I think that um, when we discovered that we were pregnant last winter in December, um, I think we both got to this place that we realized we were ready to ground and we were ready to create a real home and um, and discovering and allowing and intuiting what that was going to look like and where it was going to be and what we really wanted in our first family home um, has been such a a learning and um, a really beautiful experience of coming together for the two of us. And it was a huge breakthrough in trust because we um, we had a winter rental uh, by the ocean for this past winter, and it was beautiful and exactly what we wanted. And it it was a winter rental, so we had a firm end end date. So we had like a, a really short timeline for when we needed to make this next decision and um, and find our next home. And um, fortunately, it it timed well with the spring market, but as you know, the the real estate market right now is very competitive. The interest rates are at recent all-time highs and um, it's very much a seller's market and inventory is at record lows. So we had a lot of cards stacked up against us, but with all the work that we have been doing on naming our desires and envisioning what we want, and clarifying what's important and what's not, um, I just had this felt sense that we were going to find the home for us. And we have been aggressively looking all spring with our realtor and less aggressively looking um, for the last year plus. And uh, we signed and went under contract on our home literally... um, at the same time that our uh, winter rental lease date ended. So it was a wild ride and such a beautiful practice in standing firm in what we want, being um, detached from the timeline or how it looked. um, And also, you know, like really, really handing it over to God, like handing it over to the divine that this was all going to work out. And 
I kid you not that when we walked into our home and I walked into the mudroom and saw the storage space and the area for coats and shoes and all the dog leashes and harnesses, it was for me a full-bodied yes. Like I literally knew that we had walked into our next home when I walked into the house. And that is for me is the power of intuition and really allowing yourself the full expression of your desires so that you will know, you will feel it in your body when you have achieved it. And the last but not least, um, really cool experience that I had at the end of May was hosting our second Unbounded Retreat. So something I so appreciate about our mastermind communities is that um, we're all reflections of one another. We're all reflections of each other's experience. And I'm always committed to sharing some of my own experiences and trusting my own process with my masterminders because I think that um, we learn from one another in so many different ways, not just by coaching and challenging and calling each other forth, but also sharing and allowing a window into our own experience as coaches. And that's something I really am committed to and, um, and deeply believe that the coaching field needs more of just more humanity, more willingness to uh, share the messy middle, put your own process on loudspeaker and let your clients in a little to your own world so that they don't feel um, separate. So um, during our mastermind, we the retreat, we do these hot seats where we go around and everyone just shares um, you know, what's working, what they're celebrating and where they're discerning and sensing is their next breakthrough and what support they need around that next breakthrough. And the masterminders were asking me questions around, um, you know, what do I want next? And what's my vision for my maternity leave? And what's this new season of motherhood going to create in my business? And what we, I and they, what we all realized is that I have been for a long time leaning into this experience of surrender and gosh, in so many areas of life from, uh, from conceiving our baby to when we were going to find our second home to what my maternity leave was going to look like. And what, what I realized is that one of the consequences of being so empowered by leaning into being surrendered and letting go of our attachments is sometimes that we can also unknowingly detach from our desires or from our willingness to desire. And there's something so powerful, so compelling about being lit up, about really owning what you want and what your vision is and what you're a stand for and against. And I realized through um, through my beautiful mastermind that like I could do both, that I can still have a vision and I can still have longings and desires for how I want business to look and what I want this next chapter of life and motherhood and unbounded potential to look like. And I can be surrendered around the timeline and my attachments to the how and the when. And that is something that I don't think I understood to such a embodied level until it was reflected to me at the retreat that um, it felt like a little of my fire was out, that I was choosing to surrender and to lean in and to trust and to allow so much that I was actually giving up some of my power to um, stake a claim in the ground around what I want and what I, what I see for 
um, my, my business and my family and my desires and my husband. And there's so much power in both. And something that, um, is just a common theme with, uh, with clients and particularly with empathpreneurs is that so often we, we see so much for the clients that we work with and serve because of how deeply we care. And that care can often result in attachment. So I think when we're working through letting go of our own, uh, fixations and attachments around how things go and how things should look in quote, that we oftentimes surrender our ability to, um, to really own what we want and be fully expressed and be authentic. And something that I, I really got from the mastermind and is something that I coach clients around a lot is that oftentimes it is through our own willingness to be radically authentic, to make sure we have expressed and named and felt everything that there is for us to communicate and share and entrust other people with, that it's really through that radical authenticity that we can be compelling around our desires and be fully surrendered in the attachment or the need to control the outcome or how things look. So with that, I hope you got some gold for yourself from this conversation. It was a joy to record. Um, if you're wanting to connect with me in person before I unplug for some amount of time for maternity leave, you still have one final opportunity to join me in person for our final non-networking power hour before maternity leave. The last one of the summer is going to be hosted on Monday, August 5th at 12 noon Eastern time. And as always, you can find the link to register in the show notes. If you enjoyed today's episode, I would love to hear from you. Send me a DM on LinkedIn or Instagram, or even better, come join me in my private community and surround yourself with other amazing creators and let me know your greatest takeaway. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you next week. Thank you so much for listening today to this episode of the Prosperous Empath Podcast with me, Katherine Wood. Make sure you subscribe and leave a review so you don't miss an episode and so more empaths just like you and me can find the show. As a thank you, each month, one lucky reviewer will receive a 60-minute coaching session with a member of our Unbounded Potential team. You can find all the show notes and bonus resources over at unbounded-potential.com. Thank you so much for listening and locking arms with me to bring empathy and prosperity back into the world of business.